Hello everybody and welcome back to Norwich Talk for another match reaction. Norwich City have just beaten Wickham 2-0 in a big win for Norwich. You know, there's no other way to put it. It puts them seven points clear of Brentford, ten clear of third, who I believe um, is Swansea or Watford still. Um, Swansea have got them games in hand, of course, but nevertheless, it's still a massive win for Norwich. Now, before we get into the review, I do just want to say we have a podcast coming out on Monday with Darren Huckabee. Sam and Alfie spoke to him about his career and his progression from sort of player to club legend to being a fan of the club himself and you know growing up as a Norwich City fan um, in sort of the the, the mid 2000s really um, I was a massive fan of Darren Huckabee he always had the number six on the back of my Norwich tops um, so I'm really excited for you to see that it was really good um, to watch it back as well so keep your eyes peeled for that Monday at 5 p.m. it will be premiering on this YouTube channel here now we're here to talk about Wickham versus Norwich a big big 2-0 win now if you see me look off occasionally that's because I've made some notes and what what I notice when I make these match reviews is, is sometimes I, I miss stuff in game. So I made sure to make notes before actually doing one of these. Um, so that's where I'm looking. But the first thing to speak about, as ever in these videos, is the changes um, to the lineups. Ben Gibson came back. I know Alf spoke a bit about in... Um, in his preview that Ben Gibson, if he's fully fit, you've got to play him. Um, it's not really sort of discrediting Christoph Zimmerman, is it? Because at a championship level, he's still decent. I think it's just that Ben Gibson and the quality that he has definitely outshines uh, any of sort of Zimmerman's leading qualities, if that makes sense. Um, and Gibson was fully fit, came back into the lineup, was superb today. Um, Ono Hernandez as well started the game, which I didn't actually expect. I don't think Alf did either. Um, he put Plymouth Puerta in his starting lineup, but Hernandez started. Um, they're the two changes, two decent changes, because, you know, at this level especially, you know, Hernandez is going to cause defenders trouble, um, and he did today. Now, in terms of sort of a, a wider point of the first half, it was quite dull. You know, there's no other way to really put it. I think the only real highlight, well, there's two really, isn't there? There's the free kick from Mario Vrancic, which was a really good save from David Stockdale. He did well not to buy into thinking that Vrancic was going to aim for the, the, the top left corner. That would have been Stockdale's right, of course. Um, he did really well to tip that past his near post um, and then Wendy hitting the bar with a header which is, is a bit bizarre um, and it's sort of one of those awkward ones for the goalkeeper wasn't it where the ball was just sort of looping I think Ben Gibson put a fantastic ball in and Buendia was not shy of the header and he caused real issues for David Stockdale um, I can't remember if he got a fingertip to it or not but it was really unlucky from sort of Buendia's perspective and that's all that really happened I've got here in front of me um, I've described it as pedestrian from Norwich which isn't a bad thing I don't think Norwich ever really looked to concede or looked like they were going to concede a goal um, but there wasn't really much that happened in the first half, to be honest with you. Um, although I, I did note this as well, and I remember thinking this during the game, is every time Norwich looked to sort of get out of second gear, we just looked that there was such a golfing difference in quality. Um, and you could see that every time Norwich sort of considered you know, taking the game to Wickham. We just, we did look dangerous, um, although that didn't really happen that much. Um, the, the only other point about the first half I've got is Onel Hernandez. I thought he was decent, to be honest with you. Um, what I really love about Onel Hernandez is that he's so direct and he just runs at defenders. And we don't really have that at Norwich. It's always about the slick passing, isn't it? Um, and it's not a bad thing, of course. My God, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just, it was nice. It was sort of, a, it was quite refreshing to see Hernandez get on the ball, run at defenders. He was definitely a bit rough. The end product w wasn't there, um, but I know with a run of games, I think he could really hit his form and really hit a good stride of form um, again. But in terms of the first half, that's literally everything. And now that type of first half, when you get into the second, you want the opposite of the first. Obviously, Daniel Farker at halftime will definitely have been saying, right, let's keep doing what we're doing, but let's do it quicker. Let's sort of make sure we're passing the ball forward and not to the side. And, and Norwich did that. We obviously scored really quickly. Timu Puki um, scoring five minutes after halftime. And that goal was was really, really good. It was really good strength from Emi Buendia. Um, who Sky gave as man of the match today, and I think that's totally fair enough to do that. I personally might have given it to Kenny McLean, who I thought was outstanding. But that goal specifically, Buendia, you can just tell sort of how much he cares at the moment, because quite easy, I think he could have just gone down um, and won a foul. But no, he wants to stay up, he wants to find Timu Pukin. At this point, it's sort of like a sixth sense for him, isn't it? Where he just puts the ball in the box and it will just find Timu Puki. And Puki's done his job, essentially. He's got the ball, he's, he's found the goal. I think it was slightly fortunate that it went in. I think it came off a defender, but 
Timmy Puki definitely deserved to sort of score from that sort of set that that play really to be honest with you it's really good from Wendia and all round it was typical sort of vintage Norwich wasn't it it was quick zippy passing Wendia gets the ball beats his man finds Timmy Puki Timmy Puki scores um, that there's a Puki stat that I tweeted out as well and Sky mentioned which is since signing for Norwich City he scored the most goals um, in the championship with 46 now 47 of course and Adam Armstrong I think is second with 40 and given that last season Timmy Puki was in the Premier League. It's ridiculous, and Timmy Puki has to go down. Well, this it's not new to say this, but he is absolutely one of the best free signings of all time from a Norwich City perspective, perhaps within football. A fantastic player, and before the game, he was he was really fancying it. He was saying that he feels like he's in form, and you know he got his goal today, and he's he's continuing that form. And it's, it's such an important part of the season where you look at the teams below Norwich, Brentford, Swansea, Watford. So to you know, to an extent, they're beginning to slip. They're beginning to choke a little bit. And typically in a championship season, you'd expect Norwich to too, uh, or as well, sorry. So that, that that sort of space at the top of the table stays very sort of close-knit and, and, and tight. But no, Norwich don't want that. And it's brilliant. And as a fan, it's really relieving to sort of see us slowly build up that point difference between us. And I'll say third because I'm not really fussed about winning the title. I just want to get back into the big time. Um, although saying that, I'm very much looking forward to learning about VAR in the Premier League again. If we were to go up, um, I know a lot more fans... Um, the me are a lot more confident, but I'm, I'm weirdly superstitious, so I don't want to try and talk it up. Um, but in the you know the second half was really good from Norwich. I've got here two minutes later, Vrancic, world class pass to Ono oh Hernandez. It was sort of that instinct, wasn't it, where he just chops it with his foot and finds Hernandez, and he needs to score there, to be honest with you. Um, but I'll forgive him because we've won the game. It's not cost us anything. Um, but the pass from from Vrancic was absolutely ridiculous, and I think Vrancic he looked a lot more comfortable in the second half, in the fact that. He sort of, he sat a little bit deeper, and I think when he sits a little bit deeper, he has more time to make decisions, um, and that's where you see sort of the best Mario Vrancic. Um, and for me, he came out for about 15, 20 minutes in the second half before maybe then going a little bit quieter. Um, but that pass to Hernandez was ridiculous, and he definitely should have scored. I'm, I'm kind of sad for Hernandez that he didn't score because it's his first start since the beginning of October, so that's you know nearly five months now, isn't it? Six months, five months, I don't know. Um, it's been a long time um, is sort of the main point there. And then again, you've got McLean to Hernandez. Um, that pass from Kenny McLean, absolutely ridiculous. Kenny McLean is a player who, for me, blows hot and cold in that one week. Like, for example, this week, he's been absolutely sublime. He was brilliant today. And that pass to um, to, to Onel Hernandez, who then found Buendia, who just really should have done a lot better, Um was ridiculous and as I said earlier in the video I think McLean definitely made a case to be man of the match um, again they, they brought up Buendia's touch map uh, in the 60th minute I've got here um, and it's just sort of it, it correlates to what I said in I can't remember what podcast it was I think it might have been the 40th podcast it was when we were talking about why Norwich can't win without Buendia and you looked at his heat map and he just covers the entire sort of opposition half really doesn't he and he covers a lot of his own um, and about two thirds of the pitch is covered by any Buendia and the touch map today reminded me of that and it just you know it just shows what a, a brilliant player he is for Norwich and there's no debating it is that he is absolutely one of if not the best player in the championship right now um it's kind of ridiculous but again yeah he was was sublime today and what was interesting was the the i, I think about 65 minutes or 63 maybe something like that you started to notice wickham get a little bit frustrated there are a couple of challenges late challenges flying in um and there are a couple of yellow cards given out there was one what i thought should have been a red card i think it was mccleary where he's just gone studs up on someone should have been a red card in my eyes um but that at that point in the game, it's good for Norwich, isn't it? Because hopefully with a couple of yellow cards, you then think that potentially they can perhaps get them down to 10 men. But it's a sign that Norwich were frustrating Wickham. Um, and it sort of, again, it shows that difference in quality where even for sort of fairly later in the game where Norwich hadn't sort of stamped their authority in the first half, they still have that ability to just sort of flick a switch and be really, really good. And, and for me, that's only a positive. Um, although Wickham then did make all five of their substitutes in the 68th minute. And from there, I, I'm not going to say they looked the better team, but they looked the team to um to be more likely to score um and i think they, they they were unlucky not to have a penalty i can't remember what minute it was but there was a point where from a set piece tim cruel has like grabbed i think this their striker's face and just sort of pulled him down and the free kick was given to norwich and the commentator rightly pointed out that should have been a penalty um i think wickham will feel a little bit hard done by in that respect 
I find that really bizarre, and it's very naive from Tim Krul, and naive's not a word I often use to describe him, because, you know, he's the experienced head in this Norwich City eleven, isn't he? Um, although he was very fortunate there. And then after sort of a spell where I didn't really think Norwich were going to concede, to be honest with you, and that comes from sort of the confidence gained from earlier in the season where Norwich have just been sort of defensively decent, although we did have a little bit of trouble with the balls over the top. There was a couple of dodgy bounces. There was that number 11 who came on for Wickham who did cause problems because he's very quick and very small, um, a bit dangerous at times. I know he did that sort of Harry Kane barge into the defender whilst he's jumping. He did that, which I think is just reckless and, and dangerous in football these days. Um, but it did cause Norwich a few issues, but to be honest with you, I never thought we were going to concede, and obviously we didn't. Um, but no, I'm glad that Norwich have, have sort of gained that trust from me personally anyway, in terms of I don't think they're going to concede all the time, um, which has sort of been a theme of many past seasons where every time the opposition has the ball, I think, oh, great, here comes a goal. Um, but then Adam Eder scored, didn't he? Came off the bench, 87 minutes. I've, I've said it's after a heavy spell of pressure on my notes here. I don't think it's a heavy spell of pressure, um, but it was really nice for us to get that goal. So we've not got to see out a, a 1-0 win and sort of the heart rate goes up and down and up and down. Um, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm delighted for Anamida because obviously in the, the last fixture against Wickham, he got sent off and I'm sure he'll be feeling happy with a little bit of revenge. Um, and again, Kenny McLean with a really important touch from the corner. Um, I'm, I don't know if he can claim it as an assist or not. I think he can. But that touch where he just sort of blindly stuck his foot out, it caused havoc for, for Wickham. I think there was a couple of Wickham defenders who just sort of turned away from it. And I think sort of football 101 is when a ball is coming towards you, never turn away from it. And they did. And Adam Eder was there to score. Um, and it just made the game comfortable for Norwich. And it was a really deserved win, in my opinion. And I think the highlight has to go to sort of Daniel Farker at half time and, and the players of course were just really stepping it up um, a couple of levels I'd say they got into third or fourth gear in the second half that wasn't Norwich City at their best but we absolutely deserved to win that game and there was a point in the second half where I think we had like 81% possession um, and it's good that Norwich sort of took advantage of it um, and the, the main point which I brought up earlier is that there is sort of this difference in points, this massive difference in points between us and second and third which is, is, is really important. Now a question for you in the comments down below is how fussed are you about Norwich winning the title? I personally am not bothered at all um, mainly because sort of lifting a trophy in front of fans is special whereas without fans being there, which there won't be, there might be 2k for the last game but I'm really not fussed at all so I'm always looking at the difference between us and third um but yeah so how do you feel about that to be honest with you I'm you know as I said I, I'd rather look at the points between us and third leave your thoughts in the comments down below now for this video I think that's just about everything um a really important win for Norwich and it is for me it relieves a bit of pressure ahead of the Brentford game I know after Stoke I think it was we were saying these next three or four games for Norwich we need to well we don't need to but it would be good and it's a great opportunity for us to take maximum points we have and we've done it convincingly to be honest with you I think the worst performance was Birmingham and we won that game 3-1 so it's kind of ridiculous at this point um but it definitely alleviates a bit of pressure um from the Brentford game which if we win that I'm not going to be looking back um, outside of the automatics. So fingers crossed we do, because I would, I would quite like that. I'd quite like to just sort of relax and watch Norwich get promoted. That would be a nice thing, but you can never ask for that, can you? Um, but yeah, as I said, that's just about everything for this video. Last thing I'll say, make sure you watch out for the podcast with Darren Huckabee coming on Monday at 5pm. Um, me, Alf and Sam, I'm sure we'll be doing a podcast before Brentford, hopefully, where we can have a chat about this really good recent spell from Norwich City ahead of what will be a big game. Uh, you know, I've, I've downplayed it a little bit here, but it's still a big game. Uh, and it'll be an interesting one at that because it's, you know, two of the, the top team, well, the top two of the championship at the moment anyway, um, and two sort of really good teams to watch. So it'll be an interesting fixture nonetheless. But make sure you watch out for that podcast on Monday. And hopefully I'll see you again very, very soon.